Welcome to The Actor's Choice, where the actors and actresses have a chance to talk about themselves and their careers. Join us now for the next hour as we explore the marvelous industry of acting by actors and actresses from today's exciting show business world. And now, direct from Hollywood, here's your host, Ron Brewington. Hi everybody, I'm Ron Brewington and welcome to The Actor's Choice, brought to you by Photography is an Art. Harvey Brandman, master photographer, located at 1307 North San Fernando Boulevard in Burbank, California. And attorney Ron Irwin's 5150, the book, it's the story of young Irwin serving 13 months in South Vietnam as a Marine. And author Larry Buford, book to the future, time travel, message in a capsule, now available in paperback for only $17.95. And State Farm agent Carla Green, who says, and like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Roll the video, sir. Felton Perry, Robert Conrad. <laughs> Sudden death. <laughs> wow. Two masters with a thousand ways to kill. A pair of panthers on a roaring rampage of revenge. Back to back, they face sudden death. Damn it, Wyatt, stop showing off and end it, will you, man? Mountain madness erupting in a vicious vortex of violence. They're a two-man disaster area. Sudden death. I had to kill Bob Morton because he made a mistake. Now it's time to erase that mistake. You're fired! Thank you. Our guest today is a veteran, and I mean veteran. He's got more than 50 years in this business, ladies and gentlemen. He's an actor and a writer. He's known for numerous movie hits, including RoboCop, RoboCop 2, and RoboCop 3. The former Chicago resident has appeared in numerous TV series, including NYPD Blues, Murphy Brown, Dragnet, L.A. Law, 227, Twice, Hill Street Blues, Mannix, and the list just goes on and on and on. And if that's not enough, the gentleman is also a playwright, penning such plays as By the By and By. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome Felton Perry. Felton, <laughs> thank you so much for being oh, here. Oh, thank you, Ron. I'm happy to be here. And thank I'm, you. I wonder, as our audience knows, we had another gentleman who was scheduled to be here today. Uh, his oh, yeah. name is, uh, of course, uh, William L. Uh, Johnson. Mm. Uh, over the weekend, uh, I got a phone, I got a note and a call from him mm. letting me know that his mother had passed. He knew she was having some problems, but uh, he's a professional as he is all the time. As I said, hey man, take care of your business. Oh, yeah. I have no what it's like to lose your mother. I've lost my mother. Absolutely. Uh, and once uh, those of us have done that, uh, is your mother yes, still with us? No, my mother left too. Yes, indeed. We, it's interesting. You only get one mother. You get a thousand fathers, but you only get <laughs> one mother. She's That's very, right. very, right. very special. And yeah. as his mother transitioned Sunday, I send my condolences, of course, to William and his family mm -hmm. for losing your moms, okay? So, and but I would again, like to do so. Also. Thank you. Yes, thank sir. you. And we made a few phone calls, and, and, and I said, who, who, who can we get? Who can we get? I said, Felton Perry. He said, hey, well, let's move him up on the, on the line, because we had gotten a word, and we'll talk about this later in the show, that the uh, uh, group is going to give you an award. Yeah. We call them TST, Town Street Theater. Town Street Theater. Yeah. So we want to talk about that. But thank you again. Thank you so, oh, yeah. so much. I oh, mean, yeah. oh, glad to have you, here, <laughs> have you here today. Thank you. Well, Felton, as I read your bio, wow, that's all I can say. You know, um, mm. What was it like growing up in Chi-Town? Well, Chi Town growing up was really uh, it was really a good school, mm -hmm. in in a way, you know, if you know what I mean by that, you know, you you run pretty fast because you have to, you know, in order to out, outrun. Set world and, records every day. Absolutely, you get you know, <laughs> fucksters, you don't want them to catch up with you, and uh, at home, you know, you have the uh, <clears throat> very discipline, the, the, a lot of discipline from my my grandmother. In fact, I used to call her. The DI trainer. She she <laughs> trained the DIs. She was very very. <laughs> but look at the result. Look at the result. Oh yeah. Yeah. But when I was growing up, I did not appreciate it. But I had to do it. You know, I'm, I'm really happy that I did now. Yes, sir. That she was who she was. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, when I played baseball, mm -hmm. uh, went to school. I I went to school in, in Evanston from Chicago for a couple of years. Uh, I think that's in the bio. Mm -hmm. My sister was 
uh, accepted, enrolled in in a Catholic boarding school, St. Benedict's in, in Milwaukee, and uh, they didn't take me. No, I said, no, it'll be too much of a problem. Oh, excuse me. So I, I ended up going out to Evanston with my cousins, which was really great because it was a break from my grandmother. <laughs> I loved it. And I also got to see my first movie. You know, we couldn't go to the movies in my grandmother's. My grandmother hated that stuff. Wow. Yeah, I, this was, whew. Yeah. And you lived to talk about it. Yes, I did. Yeah. Yes, I did. Wow. Because, you know, at some point, my smarter self took over and said, okay, man, just, just do what she says. Stop bucking. Mm -hmm. You know, just go along with it because you're going to outgrow this, bro. I didn't know that at the time. Oh, well, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so what else happened in your life to, before, did, before you got into acting? Anything bigger than that happened in your life, going to school, education, different things like that? Um, well, you know, this is something that, you know, perhaps might uh, just be part of a many, the story of many young men. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, um, I don't have a birth certificate. There's not even a real, really official, official record of my birth. Mm. Um, you know, back in the day, a lot of people weren't born right. in the hospitals. And the doctors or whatever, if you delivered yourself, they didn't, you know, they didn't have time for that stuff, you know. So uh, I went through life until I was 17, um, you know, high school dropout and stuff, and, and wanted to uh, get, out, get out of Chicago, get out of that neighborhood. So I went and um, I'm growing, I was going to join the Army, anything. I was not... At Just get all. me out of here. <laughs> yeah. And I passed the Marine Corps first. Oh, right. Marine, and I went, oh, well, Army, Marines, same old, same old. <laughs> nope. Nope. I went in, and there was this, uh, this staff sergeant, and he, he looked at me, and he knew exactly how to handle me. What do you want, punk? I said, punk, man, who are you calling punk? Well, what's, what's up with you? What are you doing here? You, you, you know, you're in the wrong place. I said, no, I want to join. He said, oh, yeah. I said, yeah. He said, how many years? I said, four years. He said, can you write in four? I said, yeah, I can write. So I wrote four on the sheet where it's supposed to be and put the number four, signed my name, and bang, off I went. My mother signed for me. She had been declared my, you know, legal guardian. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I ended up in the Marines. Simplify. Simplify. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> simplify, simplify. That was great. Yeah. It was really great. It was trying. Yes. But I tell you, after, like I said, having grown up with my grandmother, yeah. these, the eyes were, were, were nothing. Right. I mean, in, in, a, in a way of speaking. For right. those who don't, you know, have had that experience, they say, oh, man, the eyes, oh, uh, mm -hmm. no, hey. You should be with my grandmother, Janie Freeman, for about a month. You'll know, you find out what hard it is, you know. Because, you know, in the military, ain't but two things you have to do. Number one, do as you're told. Yes. And number two, pick up your paycheck. What's so hard with that? Yes. And Hello. I say do that, do this. Do it. Absolutely. Thank you. But again, thank you for your time and service to this country, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Same thank to you, you, sir. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I was in the Navy. Navy. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> in the Navy. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> Get back to your regular job, Brady. <laughs> <laughs> but four years, wow. So after you came out of the Marine Corps, yes, sir. Uh, took care of your business. Uh, the idea of being an actor, when did that hit you? You know, there was a girl when I was very young, mm -hmm. like maybe 14. But mm -hmm. also I had started when I was like three, four years old. Cause I had, when I had to live with my, my, my great aunt and her daughters from like, six months old to four, you know, couldn't be in the house or stuff. And um, she used to take me to her church, her to churches, mm -hmm. and I would get up there and, you know, say a simple biblical verse and stuff like that, and she'd give me peppermint, you know, and if there was any money, she kept it. I never saw any money. So, <laughs> when I met this girl, dirty, dirty I, person. Uh, I met, I, I, you know, I met this girl that I really liked her, mm -hmm. but she was like, you know, maybe 10 or whatever, same age I was. And um, we liked each other, but, you know, you couldn't, you didn't go knocking on girls' doors back then, you know. And, and so 
what she did was she would say, let's do, uh, let's read a fairy tale. I said, okay, I'd read the fairy tale. I would be the prince. She, she, of course, would be whoever was supposed to be rescued, the damsel, as it were. And uh, at the end of it, the prince kissed her, but not the way that people think of princes kissing or people they show the kiss. We would take our right, right hand, the two fingers, you know, kiss them and then press them together. Hey, that's unique. That's yeah. a special thing. That was, well, yeah, it was also, special. too, you know, the parents yeah. were watching and stuff. They weren't playing that stuff, you know. Oh, shucks. <laughs> but there was a lot of kids watching, you know, our age, and they loved it because they knew they could get everything that went with this. Ooh, ah, ooh. <laughs> Starting a new trend, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. And uh, after that, uh, when I was um, in the Marines, we were going overseas on ship. Mm -hmm. uh, I joined a group of guys, and I, I like to say we were Sha-na-na before there was Sha-na-na, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, well, the other guys were breaking their whatever's, you know, doing, you know, the, the things you do on ship, mm -hmm. the rust and the mm -hmm. painting. Chipping and, and swabbies. Yeah. Up, yeah. Swabbies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we were going up to, like, the second deck of the superstructure in a, in a room there, you know, in a, in a lot of tour, a state room or whatever. And we were singing, get a job. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice way to pass the time. Nice oh, yeah, time. absolutely, yes. absolutely. And when I got out um, of the Marines, I enlisted in, uh, enlisted, enrolled in a junior college, Wilson Junior College in Chicago. Okay. okay. And I played ball. I also had to have a job. Uh, see, that's another story, too, about when I left home, when I was, you know, 17, whatever, I told my mother, you'll never see me again, I'm leaving. She said, oh, okay, she gave me my stuff. <laughs> and then when you, I, got, you need to write a book about this. <laughs> and when a I, bestseller. Oh, man, when I came back, you know, I mean, she let me visit her, you know, mm -hmm. but when I got out of the Marines, I had to knock on the door and, Mama, please let me in, you know. She said, ah, what are you going to do? Oh, Ma, come on, no, no. I'll let you let you in. I'll let you stay here, but you got to pay rent. You got to get a job, and you got to go to school. Heard about that? My mom did me that way. Ooh. Yes, sir. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the next thing I knew, I was over in Wilson Junior College, working at the post office, playing um, baseball. Mm -hmm. And the jocks are okay. I got nothing against the jocks. You know, uh, they're good. I loved it. Mm -hmm. But there was something about this theater people, these this theater department people that I just loved. They were so out there, where they were so up. They were whoa, they were all over. And I said, Wow, I like that. You know? So I started hanging around with them. Of course, since I wasn't, you know, in the department, what I had to do was uh, you know, hang curtains, hang as they call hanging the blacks, uh you know, paintings, a lot of stuff I was doing in the, uh, in, when I was on ship. Right. Paint the, the, the flats, as they call them, yeah. hang lights. Yeah. <laughs> and every now and then they'd give me a chance to uh, read with them. They called it, come on and cue me. I said, well, what's that? You read my, you read the, the line of the other guy and I'll tell you my line and then you see if I say it correctly. So I did that for, you know, like two, three years. And when I got out of, uh, when I got my uh, degree, because I also got a scholarship to Roosevelt University, mm -hmm. when I got my degree, somebody called me and said, um, hey, in fact, one of the kids from the, from the theater department said, hey, uh, okay, you've been around this long enough. Let's see if you can, you learned anything. I said, what? And I went over there and they said, okay. And uh, I read and got the part. And at the time, I was saying, oh, well, this is okay, you know, I, something I can tell my grandkids, you know, they go, yeah, yeah, see that there? Now behind there, there's 20 people working and all that. But one night, I was on uh, the stage, and I got a feeling that I'd never had anywhere like that. The closest to it is like that pit of the stomach thing where you get to the top of a 
you know, cyclone, yes, yeah. You know, you know, yes. one of those roller coasters, yes, roller coasters yeah. and you go to start down. Mm -hmm. I got that feeling, mm -hmm. and I went, Whoa, man, I was hooked. Mm. I was hooked. That was it. So, when did you come to Hollywood? I came to Hollywood in uh, 1968. Mm. But before Hollywood, I was also uh, able to do plays, and, and one of the plays that I did mm -hmm. got me into acting. Uh, the Actors' Equity. Right. Mm -hmm. Another one was the AFTRA. So when I came, and SAG, because I did the movie Medium Cool in... Right. 1969. Yeah, I did that yes. in, uh, well, that's when it came out, but I did, did it in 68. Okay. And when the Democrat convention was going on, mm -hmm. that was supposed to be a big deal that time. And um, so I had all three cards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I decided I'm going to go to, you know, Hollywood. I'm not going to go to uh, New York. A lot of the people I knew, they were going to New York. I said, I'm going to starve. I'm not going to starve and, and be cold. I mean, you know what? So Good no, thought. Good thought. You know? So I came here, and fortunately, it wasn't supposed to be that way. Uh, I, I got a, you know, got a TV show. I think the first television show I did was with uh, Rene Valente, mm -hmm. great casting director. I will always hold her in the highest respect I can think of. She, she took a chance on me. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. And um, the rest is history. Because you've acquired what? As according to my research, you've acquired 99 IMDB credits. That's a bunch. Is that right? That's a, that's a bunch. That's a uh, whole lot of auditions. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of them, yes. Uh, from 1969 to 1973, you got a role in one of my favorite shows, Ironside. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Ironside. Uh, I had a great experience on Ironside. Mm -hmm. um, the, the producer, a man, the executive producer, was named Cy Shermac. Mm -hmm. And uh, he um, came to see a play I had written. I was also writing at the time, mm -hmm. uh, and I was writing more because I thought there were some things that weren't being said in terms of um, just the, the life experience. Mm -hmm. Like the first play that I wrote that he saw that he liked was uh, Or, which was about guys coming back from you know Vietnam, you know, in VA hospitals, you know, all blown up and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't seen anything like that. So I wrote a play about it, and uh, not that I just said, let me write a play. I didn't know what I was doing, but I said, well, I did enough of that reading when I was, so I'll just follow that. And it worked pretty good. And so when I was doing um, Ironside, he said, how would you like to write a script for us? I said, yeah, 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 you know. You know he, he had seen the show, and uh, it was great. The only thing was when I gave him the script, he took it, and the next time I saw it, it was about 80% changed, and uh, six other guys were on there as writers. Wow. That's how you learn. Yeah, That's and how you learn. I, I realized that, you know. People rob. Well, it's not the same. I yeah. realized that that's not the, the custom. That's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to write something and then. Yeah get it back and hardly recognize it, except for maybe one or two character names and a mama or something. <laughs> <laughs> we got a little clip of uh, Iron Sides. All right. Tony, can you roll it? The man. He's not a man in a wheelchair. The chair. He's Ironside in a wheelchair. The show. You have the right to remain silent. The classic television series that broke the mold. You have the right to an attorney. Raymond Burr is... Ironside. You know it and I know it, but does the killer know it? Now on... Excellent. Excellent. Mm. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> Iron Sides. Yeah. Let's go through some of your work because you got a tremendous amount of work. Okay. 1971 to 1972, Adam 12. One Adam 12, see the man. Oh, yeah. Two episodes. Favorite scenes for you in that particular TV show? And, and Adam 12, yes. the favorite scene was, uh, I believe I was playing a, uh, a person who thought he knew it all. Oh. You know. And I didn't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. 
That's one thing I've learned in this world. Everybody don't know. Nobody knows everything. Nobody. Yeah. You well, might, ha might have all the help you think, Google and whatever, but you yeah, don't know everything. Don't know everything. This Nin guy was one who felt, felt he, he knew it all. Gosh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 1972, Trouble Man, uh, Robert Hooks. Yes, I played a boxer in that. One scene in less than about three minutes, and I played a boxer in that one, and I loved it. And I got to work with Robert, and he's a great man. I, I used to see him quite often over at the academy, but it's been a while since. Now, you, back, if I could just back up for just a second. Yes, sir. In your early age, you got involved in a group here in L.A. called the Inner City Cultural Center? I certainly Can did. you talk about that? Can you say Robert Hooks, him and a whole lot of guys? Oh, yeah. He was doing NEC back in New York, yes. but he was working with us as well. Yes. Yes. Uh, when I got to town, when I first got to town, yes, sir. I said, where can I find a theater group? So I think I tried something out in uh, Watts, you know, I, uh, that didn't work. Mm -hmm. And then somebody said, well, I'll go over to Inner City. I went over to Inner City and C. Bernard Jackson, we call him Jack, call Jack him Jackson, Jack. said, yeah, come on in. And, you know, there's no, nothing else about it. Except, yeah, come in, we'll find something that you can do. And uh, I started, you know, doing workshops, and I started uh, teaching acting, and I also got in shows there. Uh, and um, I worked with Glenn Terman, um, and uh, a whole bunch of guys. Yeah, there. yeah. And it was multiracial. It was all multi, races. Yeah. Multi, yes, yeah. mm -hmm. yes, sir. Yes. Special man, special man Jack. Yes, yeah. Yeah. he's is it, absolutely a special man. We'll be talking, I'll be giving a, p a PSA in just a moment. I'll say, hey, you don't know nothing. You don't know Jack about Jack. <laughs> <laughs> the um, Bea Richards. Yes, Bea Richards, yes. Oh, oh yeah. what a lady. What oh, a yeah, lady. absolutely. Yes. So fortunate to have worked with, you know, so many good people like that. Yes, sir. W worked with Roscoe Lee Brown, not at Inner City, but just, mm -hmm. you know, in my travels through the industry, you know. You're throwing names that a lot of people had respected, loved, enjoyed their work. Some people yeah. never heard of them. So right. here's a good chance to learn who are some of the good people back in the day. Oh, Roscoe Lee Brown was great. <laughs> he was a World War II veteran. Yeah, he was. And he was also a runner. That's right. Yeah, he's a track man. Track man, right. Yeah. Was it 400 meters or 800 meters? I don't, f I forget the, yeah. you know, okay. he distance. Okay, all right. And, and, I, and I met, uh, well, back in Chicago, I met Godfrey Cambridge. I did a show with him. Wow. Uh, met Sammy Davis Jr. And uh, it was like, wow, hello, sir. How are you? Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, can, you know, I mean, to me, those are magic moments that, yeah. I, that yeah. I'll have for the rest of my life. Amen. Amen. Yes. From Trouble Man, by the way, as you know, Marvin Gaye sang the title song for that. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yes. Trouble Man. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Boom. Uh, 1974, The Towering Inferno. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, that was great. That was yeah. great. Vicar, uh, Steve McQueen, Paul Newman, mm -hmm. William Holden, and Jennifer Jones. But, I mean, a lot of pe people, you know. And the person that really I remember had an experience with, you know, an interchange with was William Holden. And that was because I had my drums with me. You know, I play conga somewhat. Mm -hmm. And uh, he saw me, he said, oh, you play all? I said, yeah. He says, I do too. And we went and he got a drum and I got a drum and we played together. And I really, really enjoyed that moment. Wow. I'm really. Wow. We yeah. got a short video we want to take a look at. Okay. Yeah. Steve McQueen and Paul Newman race against time as one tiny spark becomes a night of blazing suspense. The Towering Inferno. It's out of control. It's coming your way. Twentieth Century Fox and Warner Brothers present Irwin Allen's production of The Towering Inferno. Hey, that was great. Great. Mm, oh yeah, yes, that was good yeah, stuff. Yeah. And these are days, back in the days, when we didn't have the special effects and the digital cameras. We were doing, y'all were doing right. some good stuff. Not we, y'all. Y'all were doing it. <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I was sitting in the popcorn, eating, in the section, eating my popcorn. Yeah, watching, well, yeah. you know, there's, there's, you know, as you well know in this yes. business, there's maybe a hundred people behind, the, you know, the camera that we never see that are making all this stuff happen. Exactly. And all we have to do is hit our mark and 
make sure we don't flood the mines too many times. <laughs> <laughs> to be or not to be. In 1982 to 1985, you did Hill Street Blues. Yes. 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 Three episodes. Yes. 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 I also see you got consistent work during your early days. I think your best year was 1970. You had 11 gigs that year. Wow. Ooh, that was money. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Um, tell us, take us back to the days, those days, back in those days. What was it like for a black actor getting work? Well, there was a bump there, I suppose, because, <clears throat> you know, people were somewhat um, aware that, hey, you know, it's time that, we started giving more people uh, a chance to bite at the apple. Yes. And also, you know, um, there's many times when many, you know, Latinos and Asian people also and all of that. But it was particularly for me, it was good and then it wasn't. Yes. And the unfortunate part that I, I hope I say this, in fact, I wrote a play called By the By and By, which I brought with me. Uh-huh. And it talks about the, the experience of being an actor right. in theater, mm -hmm. especially if you happen to be... Of color. Yes, yes. of color. That's, ah, okay. that's, I published that in By the By and By. How can we get one? Well, you have one right there. Okay, but, but oh, thank you. But how can someone else get one of these? Uh, call the, the, uh, I'll give him my um, Facebook. Just hit, hit okay. me up on Facebook. Okay. That's okay. all. Felton Perry. Okay. You know. All right. You can say, hey, I'd like to get a copy of uh, Between Tomorrow and Yesterday, which has two plays in it. Wow. Um, by the by and by is the one that I'm talking about that deals with the actors and the things that they go along, go, you know, have to deal with. But also, it's not only, uh, it's like no one is without fault. Thank you. It's like everyone has some good parts, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of being human beings. So the guy who wrote the play by the by and by, mm -hmm. is, in my, you know, uh, vision, is this uh, white playwright. And he his wrote, name. His name is w, white play, white play WD. That's okay. what we thought it called. Writer, director. Right. WD. Who was Ron Thompson? Ro oh, Ron Thompson played WD. If you mean the actor, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was yeah, Ron yeah. Thompson. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Good man. He, we've, had him, oh, we've had him here several times. Oh, Ron time. Thompson. Yes. Wow, man, he's great. Yeah. And so he played the part of this writer director who was really writing about his experience with his former wife girlfriend they had been married wow. and she was you know black and it hadn't hadn't worked out and so he wanted her back and so he got these actors he wrote this play about a black family mm -hmm. and it was horrible it was really horrible because he changed everything around she uh, became her brother, who was a nasty person. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, and the mother was, of course, as mothers are. Got you. And uh, all, it all turned out to bad to where at the end of the play, after the actors do all these, you know, horrible things, that, <laughs> 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 you know, finally, you know, there's the breakdown of, you know, the playwright, because he's, he did this to try to convince the actress that was playing, you know, uh, her her role, mm -hmm. that he loves her. He wants her to be with him. Wow. And he just couldn't come out and say it. Yeah. So he wrote this horrible play, and finally, you know, we we see through it. Mm -hmm. And in the Ray Vitti played the the part that is maybe part of me and he was like man I you know I'm not in any of this I'm just here you know I'm here because I, I like the playwright and mm -hmm. director and that's the end of it gotcha. the other guy was a, a man by the name of Marvin Elkins and he played this militant I hate and look at look <laughs> but at the same time he yes. used to be married to a white you know woman I mean it's just okay 
mm. you know. But it just I, it just like shows people yeah. are not so much what they present. Right. Right. Indeed. Indeed. Back to your career, sir. In L.A. in 1986 to 1990, uh, you did L.A. Law with Blair Underwood and Jimmy yes. Smits. Yes. 1987, yes. two words, RoboCop. Yes, RoboCop. That's great. Yeah. That's great. And I believe RoboCop was the first time that I was not cast as either a thug or a cop. Okay. Okay, every role before then, I'd either been law enforcement or stabbing somebody and running from the, from the law. Is that Marine Corps training your head? <laughs> <laughs> but this this uh, Paul Verhoeven, yes, the director, cast me in the role of Don Johnson. You know, this executive, hmm. doofus, but an executive, doofus, right? <laughs> was fun. Yes, yeah. we got a little short video. We just want to take a look at it. Okay, you know, roll it, sir. From Orion Home Video, 1991, the country is overrun by crime. The people need a hero, RoboCop. He died in the war against crime and was reborn to win it. Looking for me? The theatrical box office blockbuster is now a home video sensation. RoboCop, wow, back in the day. We gotta take a break uh, to, and we'll return more with our very special guest today, Veteran actor, Felton Perry. This is, this is the actor's choice. I'm your host, Ron Brewington. The studio of Harvey Brandman, Photography as an Art, is proud to offer you a $100 discount off any photo package valued at $300 or more. Now, Harvey's been in the business for nearly a quarter of a century, and he certainly knows how to take care of his customers. So please, give him a call today at 818-954-9294. That's 818-954-9294. You'll be glad you did. Oh, yeah, and by the way, please tell Harvey that you heard about his offer right here on The Actor's Choice. 5150, the book. It's the latest release from author and attorney Ron Irwin. As a young Marine, Irwin spent 13 months in Chulai, Republic of Vietnam. His experience, where nearly 3 million Americans went to war, was, as he puts it, 5150. The book is currently available in paperback at lulu.com. And Irwin says he'll give 20% of net book sales split evenly between the veterans of foreign wars and Vietnam veterans of America. Mm. Book to the Future, Time Travel, Message in a Capsule. It's a new book by author Larry Buford. It's a historical and faith-based account of how what we do and follow today will affect us tomorrow. The author also calls it an adventure for those who want to travel back through time. The book is now available in paperback for only $17.95 from Amazon. Get your copy today. And now, a word from State Farm agent Marla, Carla Green. Let me ask you something. What do you see when you look at your home and your car? Do you see a bundle? A combo deal? That's how other insurance companies see them. But a State Farm agent sees so much more. Because a State Farm agent sees your home and your car as more than just four walls and four wheels. They see the things you've worked really hard for. So why not give them the protection they deserve? Let me help you with that. Give me a call. State Farm agent Carla Green, 213-239-9675. I look forward to speaking with you. Attention all viewers, please save the date Friday, October 26th on your calendar as the Black Hollywood Education and Resource Center proudly presents, introducing Jessie Mae Robinson, the story of the real The Other Woman. This marvelous presentation will be held at the Nate Holden Performing Arts Center, 4718 West Washington Boulevard, here in Los Angeles, California. The program features Grammy-nominated singer, uh, songwriter as Terry Steele, recording artist Marva Smith, vocalist Laura Daniels Ball, blues great Mass Edwards, and many, many others. So come on down and see the show Friday, October 26, starting at 7.30 p.m. For more information, call 310 284 3170. 
and have a night of reflection, song, and dance. Are you ready for a good birthday celebration? Well, if you are, please go to the Nate Holden Performing Arts Center, 4718 West Washington Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 90016, on Sunday, November the 4th, from 4 to 7 p.m. The, what you'll see is the Cultural Legacy Project and Diversity and Inclusion Awards. Mm -hmm. About 30 years ago, a fellow named C. Bernard Jackson started the Inner City Cultural Center. This was for actors and actresses of all races to have a place to learn their craft. For more information, please call 213-234-1717. That's 234-1717. It's a birthday party, and if you don't know, Jack about Jack. Hey, you should be there. And finally, if you have a product, a service, or upcoming event, and you'd like to see advertised on this program, please call 323-533-1036. That's 323-533-1036. Our prices are very affordable. This is the Actors' Choice. I'm your host, Ron Brewington. Our guest today, veteran actor and writer, Felton Perry. <laughs> Felton, how do you rate your career as an actor? Oh, it's been great. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. I, there's nothing else I can say. It's just I love it. Mm. Could I take a moment? Please? Take a moment. Uh, take two moments. Okay. <laughs> first, and you know, first of all, I'd like to say on November the 10th at 3 p.m. is going to be the Town Street uh, 25th anniversary, Town Street Theater 25th anniversary. This is uh, three people. Two Nancys and Nathaniel, and and they've put together you know a great you know experiment and project that has lasted for 25 years, and um, I'm going to be one of the honorees, and I'm very I'm very just I'm just very excited. I'm a, I'm a supporter and have been for a couple of decades at least, maybe even longer, and um, <clears throat> I'd like to segue also into. Um, Inner City Cultural Center. Um, I was there in 1968, so it's got 50 years. You know, they. I guess I thought you said 30 years. Well, that was when you started. Yeah, that was when yeah. Started, yeah. Mm -hmm. but I mean, it goes back 50 years, mm -hmm. and um, and I'm and I wasn't even you know the first to be there. I mean, wow. Glenn Turman was there. It was, uh, Mako, the great uh, Japanese American actor. Mm. Um, what's her name? Um, from um, Carmen Zapata. Uh -huh. And it was just great. It was, and, I, and I came maybe a couple of years after it started. And when we used to meet on Washington Boulevard in the big theater there. And uh, I can say it's, it's been a place that I've never forgotten. And when I can, I have you know, participated. Okay. And um, finally, since you know, I'm just yes, please. Yes. yes. You, 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 see, you see this um, book between tomorrow and yesterday. I'm going to do a little thing. Okay. That's one of the books I have. And the other one is Sometimes the Diaspora Begins at Home. Now, the thing about this book is it deals with a subject that uh, is really not you know, uh, or should, should be very, you know, should be known and not in hushed tones, but it deals with just how much, um, you know, responsibility do people in, you know, the motherland, Africa, mm -hmm. um, have that there's, then there's many people well, from Africa who were, you know, are here, you know. Um, and it wasn't that I started out to, to write this. <coughs> Excuse me. I, um, I, I have a master's degree in Spanish. So I was in my um, second year and um, had a, you know, an experiment, experience with a, a you know, a, a policeman up there in um, Santa Barbara. <clears throat> and so I was in the dumps, man. I was like mad at the world because mm -hmm. you know, I looked like somebody, so he said, right. that was, you know, just not true because his partner came and said, 
He said to his partner, hey, I got the perp. And his partner went, well, what are you talking about? He said, right here, see? He says, no, no, no. And I happened to be not right there with him. I was there maybe about 20 feet away, but they were talking loud enough, especially his uh, supervisor who got um, more angry as he was speaking. He said, I told you a white man about 30 years old with brown hair and, and a beard and slim. At the time, I was, as you see me, and uh, 60, mm. and very athletically built. But the policeman that, that you know, stopped me said that I looked like a guy that they were supposed to be looking for. Mm. Well, he let me go, you know, but that really made me angry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I wasn't very much fun to be, about, be around in school. And then one day I heard, I, I, I got tired of being angry with myself, so I let the class know, the, my cohorts, what had happened. And then one of them said, in a kind of side conversation, I don't see what he's, you know, mad about. Blacks been selling each other for years, for mm -hmm. hundreds of years. A light bulb went off in my head, and I was like, I don't believe it. I'll show him. So I started doing some research. Mm -hmm. And then I went to African studies. And, and the um, result of my research is this um, small book okay. uh, called Sometimes the Diaspora Begins at Home. And it's really uh, my thesis, my master's thesis. Mm -hmm. and. Um, Unfortunately, um, he was right. Okay. How can you get a, a copy? Oh, you get the same way. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Facebook, Felton Perry. Okay. Okay. And the reason why I, you know, wanted to let you know that is, is also uh, I got an um, email from Michigan State University, mm -hmm. the, the libraries, and now... Sometimes the diaspora begins at home is on the shelves. On the shelves. All right. All right. And I brought right. this for you too, <laughs> so right. you can have them. What are the two cards here? The two cards yes. are in case you want to get a, a Kindle. If you want to, you know, I haven't ever done it, but uh, in case you want to get a Kindle. Okay. Okay. You want to get it to, to, to look at. Okay. So that was, you know, thank you for giving oh, please. very That's much for giving for. me this uh, yes. opportunity to... You, we give each other things. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you Indeed. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Haven't finished with your career yet. 1987 <laughs> to 1989, you were in Hooperman, 42 episodes. Yes. 1990, RoboCop 2. Yes. And then, in, and then three years later, RoboCop 3. Are we ready for a RoboCop 4? I think they tried to do it, in a, you know, with the TV series. Gotcha. You know? But I'd just like to say about John Ritter, I don't want to just not say anything, you know, have a chance to say something about John Ritter. Yes. He is Hooper, Hooperman, the, the uh, character that the show was named after. Mm -hmm. It was because of John, I like to feel, that I was uh, afforded the role. Gotcha. And um, he's a great man, great man. And yeah, and one of the um, producers on that, executive producer, is uh, Stephen Bochco. Mm -hmm. And you know, we'd gone back, you know, the L.A. Law and you know, and Hill Street Blues and things. So I want them to know that I want them to know that I didn't forget them, and I'm glad that you uh, brought it up to you know. Oh, yeah. They're both great men, as far as I'm concerned, and of course the cast, everybody there was, you know, was was fine. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'm really very fortunate to have uh, known so many great people, yes. yourself included. Thank sir. you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. In the business, and I'm very happy about that. Okay. Want to do a little directing, maybe? Uh, only if it's a play that. I do. I'm not too much into uh, direct. I took a directing workshop mm -hmm. and um, directed a couple of little shorts that I that I made in, in the workshop. Yes. And this was through the, the Television Academy, so it was not, you know, when they pay as you go kind of things. This gotcha. was 
uh, the Television Academy, and it was for actors mm -hmm. to learn what it's like to, to be directors. Yes. Um, what I found out is that to be a director, you need to know a lot of stuff. I mean, you need to really know. Yes. Angles, lights, uh, what f film works neat, works best with, you know, whatever the lighting is and all. Mm -hmm. And so I decided that, you know, I did these couple of shorts, and that's about as far as I want to go in terms of directing and in movies or television. Got you. Yeah. Speaking of shorts, this past weekend I had a chance to go over to Sarah, uh, Sandra Evans Manley. She has this Real uh, Black Men Film Festival, yeah. 21st annual. Food was good, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Raleigh student, they always have good food. There were several excellent short films. Uh, uh, there was a 10-year-old young man in there. Uh -huh. He directed, wrote, and performed in his own movie. Mm -hmm. His name is Michael Miles Hayes. He's uh -huh. been featured in uh, Queen Sugar, The Long Road ba uh, Home, and Undercover Boss. Mm. They're starting young now. Oh, yeah, that's great. That's great. Man, he was good. Yeah, that's great. And the one thing I do like about the present atmosphere mm -hmm. in Hollywood in terms of personnel and that yes. is that there's just always surprise, more people to, to know and stuff, and that's just such a, that's great, yeah. you know? Yeah. It used to be, you know, and I'm like maybe second wave or maybe even a third wave. Um, most of the people who had any kind of, uh, you know, African or whatever, uh, Latino, mm -hmm. Japanese, we all knew each other. Really? Yeah. Sure. Now we don't. Yeah. There's too many of us. I love it. <laughs> Shoot, the Nigerians are coming into this yeah, world. Black, uh, black, black British uh, actors are coming in. Yeah, Everybody's love coming it. in. Yes, I yes. love it. I love, I love it. it. The competition. We as the viewers, yes. we get the best because that competition is so keen. Oh yeah. You th what do you think? Oh yeah, it, it's very keen. Yes. yes. And of course, um, I haven't been involved in that part of it for many years. Got you. You know. Um, but, they, but the people smile when they hear your name. Well, it's that's a sign of respect. They have seen your work. Wow. You have opened up. You are a veteran, but you are a trailblazer as well. Like I asked you earlier oh. in the show, what was it like back in those days oh, yeah. when others couldn't get a job? You know, the backs, what you had to go through, yes. made it easier for people nowadays to go through it. Yeah. Yes, and you know, I've, if you don't mind me oh, saying please, that, please. that's the way I feel about, mm -hmm. like, um, Andrew Monroe Perry, better known as... Uh, Step and Fetch It. Yes. And Mantan Moreland and Beulah, whoever those were, Hattie McDaniel. Yes. What they had to go, go through and made what I went through mm -hmm. seem like a cakewalk. That's right. You know, I never want to forget what it's like, what it was for mm -hmm. me, who, who did what that made it easier for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so, you know, people say, oh man, that was hard. Yeah, but that's you're looking at it from today's point of view. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, to not uh, get too, um, you know, pigeonholed in that ethnic. Um, there's many, many mm -hmm. actors, you know, uh, Caucasian, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, white, mm -hmm. that, man, are very much, you know, mm -hmm. influence me. And like I mentioned, uh, William Holton all over the place, yeah. you know, and yeah. so I just wanted to say that so Thank I didn't you. feel like I was, you know, leaving anybody out. <laughs> no, you didn't. In fact, I got a question, my last question. Yes, sir. How do you want to be remembered, sir? At child time, you know, Felton, come and get something to eat, you know. <laughs> 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 never want to never want to miss Chow. Indeed. Um, other than that, um, people who will have their own memories of me, and the um, thing for me to do is just uh, remember them. I'd rather remember all the people or most of the people that I can, who made it, so that I could do what I did. And one of them is Town Street. C. Bernard Jackson, mm -hmm. uh, Cy Chermack, 
um, just, you know, the actor studio, you know, mm -hmm. I was part of, I mean, I am a member of the actor studio, Lee Strasberg. I mean, it's just people all over the place. Mm -hmm. I want to remember them. So maybe um, if I want to be remembered, how, I want to be remembered and say, oh, yeah, that's the actor that always talks about all the people that, you know, were in influential in, in his career and helped him get to where he got. That's the way I'd like to be, be remembered, okay. by the ones that I remember. Thank you, sir. Thank yes, you, sir. sir. I want to say special thanks to our sponsors, including Harvey <coughs> Brandman, Photography is the Art, Ron Irwin's 5150, The Book, Larry Buford's Book to the, Fort, to the Future, Time Travel, Message in a Capsule, and State Farm Agent Carla Green. And much, much thanks to you, sir, Felton Perry, <laughs> coming today. Better an actor. Better an actor. Uh, best <laughs> wish to you. Do come back again, please. Invite me and I will, sir. You got it, sir. And hopefully I'll have, you know, things more in a, you know. Looking back. He never yeah. thought about it. Okay. And, when, and, of course, we want to thank our uh, special thanks to our ever-growing number of persons that, we, that watch the show. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>